Hey guys, I got another case I wanted to revisit with you guys. I've worked on it before and I found a lot more information. I've been asked to redo this case and to dig further in it. So uh, we're going to take a look at what happened to this gentleman. Uh, December 2nd of 2020, the victim was Christopher Whitley. The moon on that day was a waning gibbous. Surprised. The location was Hood County, Texas. His age was 28. The suspected... Huh, I don't know what you would even call it. Uh, suspect would be a cougar or a lion or a person or... They don't know. It happened during the early morning hours, probably around dawn. Which is when most of these things... We know do hunt. December 2nd, 2020, he was planning to hitchhike to work around 9 a.m. He grabbed his blue and white backpack and walked out the door of his girlfriend's house near Lippin, an unincorporated town of about 500 in a rural Hood County, about an hour's drive southwest of Fort Worth, according to the Hood County Sheriff's Office. That morning, he took a shortcut through the dense brush to get to uh, Howe Road, a narrow uh, country lane where he planned to thumb a ride. Mr. Whitley would never make it to the highway that day. The next day, a friend of Whitley's filed a missing persons report, and that evening, as the sun was setting, Hood County Sheriff deputies searched the woods between his girlfriend's house and Howe Road. First, they spotted Whitley's backpack beneath the cedar tree. Then about 15 feet away, they spotted Whitley's body in a very dense brush pile underneath a bunch of brush. Uh, he was about 15 feet away. They spotted Whitley's body in the brush. The sheriff's deputy said it was a miracle that they even seen him in the brush. It was so thick. Spokesperson for the sheriff's office said, this was a very dense area of brush. They do have a picture online if you want to look at it. But just, it's just a pile of brushes, all they're showing. Soon, the Hood County Justice of the Peace, Catherine Gwynn, arrived at the scene to determine the cause of death. She had seen victims killed by guns, knives, and car crashes. But nothing like this. Whitley's throat, from under one ear to the other, was torn open. Small thin scratches marked his torso, forehead, and on the side of his face. He was shirtless and most of his clothes removed, which is very common. The weather had been cold with a front moving in. So you got a front moving in. You have a change in, in fronts. We notice that also affects a lot. We had no idea what exactly happened after going over the scene. We couldn't make those calls at all, Gwen told me. Like most small counties, Hood County doesn't have its own medical examiner. So Gwen called the medical examiner's office in nearby Tarrant County for assistance. But around lunchtime the following day, December 4th, Gwen received a phone call. Had she seen the press release that the Hood County Sheriff's Office had just put out? Mountain lion attack leaves man dead. They have already decided this is going to be a mountain lion. Already. They ain't even got the body processed at the morgue yet, and they're already determined to cause a death. Read the headline. The release stated that the sheriff's office, game wardens, and a trapper with the U.S. Department of Agriculture were all searching for the offending animal. Please don't interfere with the process of locating the animal and stay clear of the area being actively worked by the officials, said Sheriff Roger Deeds. Now remember right here, this is important. The game wardens, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the Sheriff's Department are all on the same page at this point right here. They're all saying, was this mountain lion? Now remember, you're going to see why. They had already claimed that it was an animal, that it was a lion. They're all on the same page. It's, it's gonna, you're going to see why. 
Though Deeds and his deputies already suspected that a lion had killed Whitley, the medical examiner's preliminary autopsy report prompted them to go to the public with the theory. According to Susan J. Rowe, and I dug deep for names, the deputy medical examiner who signed off on the document, the punctures and the lacerations on his neck were consistent with that of a large cat, mountain lion in parentheses, end quote. Gwen was confused about her autopsy. Okay, there's starting to be some confusion here. People are starting to not agree at this point. Hood County has its share of coyotes, bobcats, and even the occasional escaped kangaroo. But there has never been a documented mountain lion sighting in the county, much less an attack, according to TPWD records. Now, they never had a mountain lion attack. It's very rare that they even do attack people. Mountain lions are known to have killed fewer than 30 humans in U.S. history, mostly in the mountains west and California. Not one in Texas has ever been recorded as killed by a puma, a conqueror, or there have ever been a handful of fatal attacks in the state at all in Texas. Britton Stocky a Hood County game warden went to the scene the day after Whitley's body was found. In his site visit report, Stucky wrote that he found no evidence of a mountain lion attack. Wait, are the game wardens disagreeing now? The usual tell-tale signs were all absent. There were no lion prints, no feces, or territorial scrapes. Small mounds of debris that lions pile up and mark with urine at most kill sites. However, he did note the large presence of human tracks and disturbances from the first responders at the scene. That afternoon, Stucky, who, re uh, who relied on specialists putting in his report together, advised the Sheriff's Office to reach out to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Biologist for further expert assistance with the investigation. According to emails obtained by the Texas Monthly through State Open Records Law Act. Okay, through the FOIA, they found out that the game wardens now aren't agreeing with them. The game wardens are saying that this animal that y'all have put out saying that has killed this young man is not what they're believing even done it. But this was all done behind closed doors. This is all hid in the back away from the view. But luckily somebody filed a FOIA and was able to get this information. Without this information, we would never even have known they had this disagreement. It just would have been a mountain lion, which I think the sheriff is going to, you're going to see. As soon as he saw photos from the scene, Jonah Evans, then the uh, mammalogist, they had a, a mammalologist come in for TPWD, believed there was no way that a mountain lion had killed Whitley. There was no way. Some of the distinctive markers of a mountain lion attack, including clear marks from canine teeth and missing organs from the abdomen, weren't evident. An expert in animal tracking who has seen hundreds of mountain lion kill sites in person and in photos, Evan was tasked with leading TPWD's effort to assist the uh, sheriff's investigation. He was especially intrigued by the lack of lion tracks in the sandy soil. He's saying the same thing that the uh, wildlife officer said. It's not pointing toward a mountain lion. There's not even no tracks, no proof, no structures, nothing that they would commonly do. Saturday, December 5th, two days after Whitley's body was found, they were joined by Mike Bodenchuk, and I hope I said his name right, an experienced mountain lion trapper and director of the Wildlife Services of Texas. A division of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Bodachuk started uh, at Ground Zero, the dense thick where sheriff's deputies recovered Whitley and then worked his way outward. The only animal tracks he found within 150 yards were those of coyotes, deer, hogs, house cats, and uh, dogs. In two locations, I identified tracks of a mid-sized dog, Bodachuk wrote. Bodachuk concluded that they were made two to three days apart and likely indicated let me make sure I get this right for you guys. And they likely indicated that a free-roaming dog lived nearby. As Bodachuk wrapped up his work at the scene, it was clear to him that a mountain lion did not attack Whitley. 
he's even saying no mountain lion. All these experts are saying no mountain lion. Two days after his visit to Hal Road, Bodachuk walked into the turret. <laughs> yeah. Bodachuk concluded that an animal may very well have killed Whitley, but it was no lion. Without being able to examine Whitley's trachea, which had been removed from his body by the medical examiner's office and was unable to offer any more definitive analysis, he was not allowed to gain access to the trachea. Why not? Was they afraid he was going to get some DNA off of it? I don't know. Speculation, but it makes you wonder. The following month, on January 25th, Rhoda delivered her final autopsy to the sheriff's office. She ruled Whitley's death an accident and reported meth had been found in his system. How many times have they tried to throw drugs and alcohol into these? That's called deflecting. What they're trying to do is they're trying to make the public look at these as it doesn't matter that this person lost their life and we don't want to spend a lot of money on it because, hey, this guy was a menace to society. He was no good. He was lower than everybody else. So it's not a big deal. They're trying to take away any kind of dignity that this man that lost his life even had. Even though he had served his time. His time was served. He had paid his price. That's what makes me sick. But anyways. The cause of death. Injuries of the neck due to animal attack. That's what was in the uh, autopsy report. The reference to a mountain lion. Or a specific animal of any kind. Had been dropped. The next day, the Hood County Sheriff's Office wrote in a press release that it was closing its investigation into Whitley's death, saying it agreed with the medical examiner's conclusion since there were no signs of foul play in Whitley's death. Okay, whenever you hear that, the first thing you start thinking is, okay, they, they closed the case, so that's going to give me an opportunity to fill out a FOIA to find out more information, right? Well, the sheriff had already thought about this. Watch. Gwen said she wishes there would have been further investigation by the sheriff's office, but I can't do their job for them. In fact, Jim Vaught, a trapper from the New Mexico, who is among the new or is along as among the few to have investigated a fatal mountain lion attack on human, told Gwen that he was sure that Whitley had not been killed by a mountain lion. You have all these experts telling you. These are experts that have worked mountain lion deaths. According to Deeds, deputies began to suspect that a mountain lion was to blame. Almost immediately after the body was found, there was nothing that con nothing was consistent with that of a human would have done, or should have done, or could have done, Deeds said. Everything pointed to a large animal, like a cat. Rose further explained the theory. The blood evidence showed that he was attacked when he was standing up. Now remember that he was attacked standing up. It wasn't something where he was lying down, passed out or asleep or whatever. They're saying there wasn't enough stuff in his blood that he was incapacitated and una unable to defend himself. He was on his feet and knew what he was doing at the time. Rose said, describing Whitley's fatal injuries, those injuries are consistent with an animal ripping out someone's throat. It ripped his throat out. While he was standing. That's that's very important. It ripped his throat out while he was standing. Not being pulled down. Not lying down. But standing and had his throat ripped out. DNA testing could have given better insight into this question. But no test was ordered by the sheriff's office. Without a request to collect DNA, the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office followed standard procedure washing the body shortly after the autopsy effectively eliminating potential DNA evidence. But Evans was startled by the decision. I was startled that they would do this so quickly. Given that the cause of death was yet to be determined, he wrote in his report the medical examiner's office declined requests for an interview and didn't answer any submitted questions. Or by email. <laughs> wow, I bet y'all are loving this. This is full, full of holes. The sheriff's office did send Whitley's fingernail clippings to the USDA laboratory to search for any traces of mountain lion DNA. That test came back negative. The lab also tested two hairs removed from Whitley's clothes, which were determined to be from a canine, but did not reference a breed. Sending in the fingernails, testing for a cat, nothing else. And you know when they send these requests in, 
on a murder case if they don't write out what they're looking for and they write out we want it tested for this that's usually all they're going to test for is for a cat nothing else so if anything else does come up they're going to say nothing came up not what you were looking for I know that it could it could have easily been a dog that killed Whitley Rhoda Chuck told me pointing to the gashes on Whitley's throat to the large volume of blood found on his clothes based on the spacing between the alleged bite marks now they're saying alleged bite marks that tells me that he's not even believing these are bite marks. He believes this thing reached up and ripped his throat out. I'm not trying to be grotesque about it. But you have to understand, when they're saying allegedly, they're, in law enforcement terms, they're saying they don't believe it. Something else done it. There was evidence there to make them believe that something else happened, which I think is that, you know, in my opinion, it reached up and ripped his throat out. Because he was standing then they then they said there were no bite marks on Whitley's arms or legs indicating that a dog brought him down to the ground before going in for the kill. There was no proof that he was even attacked by a dog. He had no bite marks on the lower body or anything. In fact, he stated that it would take a large bipedal creature to produce the injuries, but that was redacted from the initial report by the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office redacted a report. Which they're not supposed to change the report. The sheriff disagreed with the reports that a bipedal creature would have been more capable of attack by ripping the throat out than any other injuries to the body that would show being pulled down. The sheriff then, this is the part I want y'all to listen for, he thought about it. The sheriff then closed the case but ordered parts of it sealed and blamed it on a mountain lion. They sealed it where y'all can't find it with a FOIA. This case will be sealed for no telling how long. All the evidence, everything of importance is now sealed. You can't look at it. He closed the case, so it means the case is over. Mountain Lion done it. Sealed the case. He hid this one good. Uh, I feel sorry for the family going through this. It's hard to get answers whenever you have so many experts telling you that the culprit that you're blaming is not what done this, but you got a, a hard-headed person saying... Now, that's a mountain lion from the very beginning and not even listening to the experts and sticking with it, closing the case and just sweeping it under the rug. That's really irritating. It's not fair to the family. I think there's going to be more come out of this case. I am going to watch it. I think you all, from what i found and what you've heard, you can see the holes. You can see people start disagreeing. They're seeing different things. The alleged bites they're saying it was ripped out by a hand a claw something they kept saying that he was standing trying to say there were no indications of an animal pulling him to the ground he was standing up when his throat was tore out his clothes were ripped off of him this happens all the time and then they throw in that he had a little bit of meth in his system he had been in prison they also uh, printed that but he had served his time he had a job he had paid his debt to society but we're going to criminalize this guy as much as we can to make it okay that this happened to him. And that's irritating. He has a family. He has loved ones. No matter what he was going through or what addictions he had or whatever. I mean, he's a human being. And like I was always told by my dad, you always leave a person with their integrity. No matter what you do, what they've done. You go arrest them, whatever you're doing. You always leave them with their integrity, and they will always respect you for that. Be, you know, be a human. But, uh, I got this one done for you. It took me a little time. As you know, on our other channel, we've been busy there, too, so it took me a little extra time and the digging and everything. I've been drinking a lot of lake water with Kaylee. And if you all are interested in watching us drink lake water and catch catfish, I'll put the link to our other page in the description if you all want to come on over and check us out and watch our videos and support us there. We got a lot more coming out. We're heading to another spot. And uh, we'd love to have you guys over there too. So if you want to see more of us, you can jump over there and see more of the land, the lake, some boating. But I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Share this out. Don't forget to hit the like. That helps a lot. Throw us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. It helps the algorithm. And we can really push it out there and get more subscribers. Spread the word to a larger audience. It's harder to shut down a larger audience than it is a little audience. So the faster we can grow, the bigger we can grow, the more power we'll have in putting out the word. 
appreciate each and every one of you. Keep your heads on a swivel. We got a live coming up the 29th of October. And uh, we'll see you guys there. God bless.